and welcome to season three of Travel Stories with Marsh. So if you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then you are in the right place because here every week I will be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us around the globe by sharing their travel stories. On the episode today, we will venture into the world of solo travel with a fabulous travel nomad, Sonia Haboob. Sonia is an educationist by profession, but a traveler at heart who loves exploring the most unexplored parts of the world all on her own. She has so far covered 95 countries, most of them on her own, and she joins us on the podcast today to tell us about her travel stories as a solo traveler to some very enchanting parts of the world. Sonia, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today and to talk about solo travel, a, a topic that we haven't really explored much on the podcast. So we're really right. glad that you joined us. So, you know, tell me, you have been exploring the world on your own. You've just come back from, from your travels. So why is solo traveling so special to you? First of all, thank you very much for having me today, Marsh. Uh, it's a pleasure. And as you said, like most of them, I've traveled them alone. Mm. Um, I don't like to use the word empowerment mm -hmm. because as women, I already feel that we are in the power sure. itself. Uh, but definitely it opens up a whole world of self-awareness, self-consciousness mm -hmm. and self-love. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you come back, you literally tell yourself, wow, if I am able to do that, mm -hmm. then I can deal with anything. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the magic in itself mm -hmm. about solo traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's fabulous. It's not about just traveling, you know, because there's so many other things attached to travel for right. you as a solo traveler. Like you just um, like I, I know you don't like to use the word empowerment, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think it's confidence building for you. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's the courage to just go out there on your own to be able to, you know, get into a hotel room, you know, be on your own, eat on your own. So it's much more than just exploring a place for you, I yes, guess. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely, as you said, like it's not only about uh, seeing new cultures and get in touch with new people, uh, seeing amazing new landscapes, but definitely build a uh more self-confidence yeah mm. no which is fascinating I'm so glad that you know you're talking about um, you know self-confidence you're talking about empowerment you're talking about courage but everything kind of comes to you through travel right, right? so yes. there's so many different facets to travel that we're discovering I am discovering actually through this podcast um, mm -hmm. which is absolutely amazing now of course I know you go to some off the beaten mm. uh, places places that are pretty much unexplored and not popular you like exploring yes. those uh, places and I said in my introduction that you go to the very unexplored parts of the world but to start with the first question <laughs> of the podcast I am now very interested to know where will you be taking us on a journey today uh, definitely to Polynesia. Mm -hmm. to That's the Marquises French Polynesia, Island. right? Yes, the okay. Marquises Island, uh, specifically of uh, Nukuhiva and Hivaua. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's so special about those islands? Um, I remember the day I landed in and there was this lady, who, because the second language is uh, French, of mm -hmm. course, it's part of France, uh, but they have their own patois, their own dialect. And I came out of the flight and she told me, what are you doing here? And uh, and she was like, do you know that this is the amongst the second, like, I think it's the second most cannibal island in the world. Mm. And I looked at her and I was like, this must be a joke. And she was like, no, like, we don't accept tourism here. Yeah, but you can just follow me and uh, it will be fine. At the end, I ended up like spending 12 days mm -hmm. um, with her, with her family uh, not in a guest house, but like uh, in between the jungle and the forest in their uh, typical houses that they build from Earth. It was like going back, uh, not in years, but like probably thousands of years ago, um, not wearing shoes, any type of shoes, no technology, uh, almost no cars in the island apart, like from two or three. Um, 
So what's special about them? It's uh, forgetting about the world probably we are living in mm -hmm. and enjoying that real, genuine journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. I knew New Cohiba because of its horses. Like it's, there are more horses than human beings in the island and they're completely wild. And once I arrived in the jungle, uh, I'm still really emotional about it. There has been a whole ceremony from the chief tribe by accepting me into the tribe. So they're, they're still living in an, like they're indigenous. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, It was so strong, such a unique moment of my life. I'm really emotional when I talk about it uh, because it's something that I did not expect at all. So in a way, in 12 days, I became part of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like picking up, uh, you know, fruits from the tree, being barefoot. And somehow after the 12 days and I had to go because I had my ticket back, um, I you was sad? crying. Probably my soul belongs here. Oh, so, you know, I want to I want to ask a little bit more about Nukuhiva because, mm. you know, you're taking us on the journey, right? And um, again, it is not in a place where tourists are welcome. Yeah. So I really doubt that people who are listening to the <laughs> podcast, um, I doubt if anybody has been there or if even if anybody's been there, it might be a very, very small percentage of people. Mm -hmm. uh, but since, you know, I... Uh, you know, very few people will probably even go there in the future because they are not, they don't welcome tourists. So, you know, through you, we want to know what is this island like? You know, what does wow. it look like? What is this journey into this island? What will a journey into this island feel like? What are the things that you saw? What is yeah. the surrounding? What is the food? You know, a little more about mm -hmm. the tribe there. So sure. give us a little more on that. So, um, of course, they say that tourists uh, are not welcomed. Uh, there are a few guest houses. Um, what they don't want is to have a mass tourism like in Tahiti. Uh, they want to protect their lands. They want to protect their culture. Um, it's still an indigenous tribe, so they're living their way. Um, what I've seen is definitely something I haven't seen in the other 94 countries. Mm -hmm. um, not only this amazing mix between the Pacific Ocean, the waters, it's completely transparent water. We're not talking about Seychelles. We're not talking about Maldives or the Caribbean. It's completely different. You are swimming with the animals. Even if you don't deep dive, you can definitely see the small sharks, the uh, manta rays. Um, it's full of colors. Mm. Um, then you can hike as well. Mm. Uh, and you end up seeing these amazing waterfalls. Um, I would say that it's such a spiritual island as well. You can just get lost, but at the end of the day, you will always find yourself um and this variety of fruits and uh, that i haven't seen in mm. any other island uh not many vegetables <laughs> mm -hmm. but definitely a lot of fruits um and it, it's the whole vibe mm -hmm. of the island so if you let yourself go and you just allow yourself to be guided by the island herself, mm -hmm. she will speak to you. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. So definitely this is a place where you would go to meet the spiritual side of yourself. Yes. And you want to be one with nature. Uh, would you say that? Like go to this Absolutely. place when you want to like be, like experience nature in its totality and just enjoy being one with nature and that sounds beautiful yes. incredible but the fact that it's still a cannibal island mm -hmm. is very surprising to me so they still I, they eat human beings i mean this is what they say mm. i'm still alive and i'm here yeah so um i've done few researches once i came back and i found out that like three four years ago an Australian tourist went missing and uh, he was on a honeymoon with his wife. Oh, and, my uh, God. He was eaten, but... Um, there's no proof to that. 
There's no proof. And on top of that, when I've asked them, they were this lady, she was translating from their dialect, their own language to French. And she told me the whole point and reason is to protect our culture and our customs. Mm. So it might be, I don't want to use the word legend, but mm. it might be a legend as well. And it might be not. Um, I also think that as long as we do respect and do not go off the path, mm. uh, because there were literally some places where uh, they were telling me and showing me, do not walk there. Oh, oh okay. do not But that's cross. also very important wherever yes. you go. I mean, it doesn't matter exactly. whether it is in this particular island, uh, but wherever you go, I think we have to respect yes. the land and respect the way they live. It's exactly. very, very important. So that was a very beautiful journey into Nukuhiva yes. um, in uh, Polynesia. Yes. And I think people out there who are listening no, by now that this is an island which has not been discovered mm -hmm. by many. Uh, we'll have a lot of those places and throughout this podcast yeah. <laughs> because Sonia loves to go to unexplored places. Um, and it's also important to know that this is one island that um, not very many tourists go. No. It's also a cannibal island. They say it's in can The yes. locals over there say that it is a cannibal island. But Sonia is right here, <laughs> alive and kicking, <laughs> exactly. and uh, narrating her story to us. Now, I just want to pick up on that whole bit about mm -hmm. you know you went to an island which was a cannibal island, all on your own. Of course, you didn't know that in the beginning. There must be so many pros mm -hmm. and cons of solo traveling. Yes. Um, so what? according to you, are the pros and cons of life as a solo traveler. And also what I would want to know is, you know, what advice would you give to mm -hmm. solo women travelers out there? Um, I would say not a lot of cons. The mm. only cons that I would highlight as a woman is to pay extra attention all the time. Mm. Uh, specifically in some countries. Mm. Um, like I know that 6 p.m. when the light, daylight comes, goes off like I'm in the guest house I'm I'm not going out uh this is the only cons that I would highlight in terms of pros um it's just gives you that self-confidence mm. self-trust mm. even more because you don't have only your five senses awake but your six senses awake um and also on a um let's say psychological point of view and, and physical point of view, like you're regenerating more neurons mm -hmm. and more cells mm -hmm. because you're not in your daily routine. Like it's a challenge every single day, especially when it's a solo travel and you're going with the flow. It's unplanned, which is my case. Right. Like today I'm in Shanghai and then suddenly I say, um, I think Okinawa, the Pacific Japanese islands are near here. So I'm going to take a flight or a boat or a ferry. So you have to keep organizing. And, and yeah, so that's a pros, of course. It's not yeah. a con. But also it's kind of, it's a, a lot of freedom as well, right? Yes. So you, because you're not with somebody else. You can just yes. decide for yourself. You don't, if you've planned three days in a place, you don't necessarily have to stay for those exactly. three days because you're not with anybody else. Yes. You don't have to depend on them. You can just, you know, make your own decisions and go. Yes. Uh, now, of course, you know, like we know that, you know, you've been traveling for so long and um, you've been to 95 countries, most of them on your own. But there must have been some really unforgettable, you know, experiences as mm -hmm. a solo traveler. So what has been the most unforgettable experience for you in your, uh, you know, experience yeah. as a solo traveler? Uh, going from Kazakhstan, then crossing to Kyrgyzstan, then going up to Mongolia uh, which is like a completely nomadic country. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I went down to China and I've decided to visit like the small villages of China, like from north to the center to south. And then I was like, mm, I'm near Hong Kong. So I went to Hong Kong, Macau. And then from Macau, I did something completely crazy. It's something I always wanted to do, but I didn't think like it was on that travel, on this travel. And I went to the Pacific Islands of Japan, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm from Okinawa. And then the first night, uh, there was like an earthquake 
Uh, so there was like a tsunami risk and I was like, oh my God, Sonia, you are completely crazy. So I flew to, I took the ferry and then I went to two other islands of Okinawa. And then from there I uh, crossed and I went to Taipei, to Taiwan. And then I landed back home. But yes, So are you definitely. calling this whole experience from going from Kyrgyzstan to Kazakhstan to Mongolia, the entire stretch that you did? Yes, completely unforgettable also yes. because it was crazy yes yeah? absolutely. and as a solo traveler yes. you were able to do this you know experience this yeah. crazy experience and then you know live to tell us the story <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you. now you've spoken yeah. about you know so many different destinations mm -hmm. like we to right so because we're talking about um, a very unexplored place like a Kazakhstan or a Kyrgyzstan and then Mongolia not very many people go to Mongolia mm -hmm. Uh, then you go off all the way to Japan. Yeah. And then, of course, there's Polynesia, which is one of your favorites. And then so many other countries in between. Mm -hmm. But if you were to pick one favorite destination today, which one would you pick and why? I think I would pick up Ishigaki, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the Pacific islands of Japan. Oh, wow. Uh Again, it reminded me a little bit of Nukuhiva, but completely in a different way. Uh, I didn't stay with an indigenous, an indigenous tribe, um, but I cycled the whole island, oh. tracked the whole island, run as well in the island, um, swam, uh, and then I could dive in the island. So a lot of um, activities. So it's very adventurous. Uh, there are no more than 62 people in the island, like locals one. Uh, there are a few tourists, but I haven't seen one foreigner. They're like all Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's a very spiritual island. So it's where the human being finally meet himself again. Okay. And where you and nature finally become one. Animals are everywhere. So you have this constant feeling of being outside even when you are inside. Uh, the food is amazing. So it's Japanese food. Uh, the locals, they barely speak English, but they would be eager to help you anytime for everything. And it's just like this amazing geographic uh, it's flora and fauna. It's really unique in the world, like far from anything I've seen in another place in the world on any or any other island. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are so many hidden small gems within the island, which is already being a gem itself. Mm -hmm. um, like some caves, hidden caves, hidden lakes, uh, mangrove forests. There was a unique connection for you with the island. And yes. That's why it is your favorite destination yes. so far. So also, I think for you as a traveler, you connect a lot to your spiritual self. And it's very important for you um, if your soul connects to a place. Mm -hmm. um, and as a solo traveler, I think that's also very important yeah. for you, especially. And I think with other solo travelers as well. Uh, but also as a solo traveler... Yeah. I know the experiences are amazing and that's why mm -hmm. you travel alone. But there are times when, you know, some bloopers happened, you know, because there are so many challenges we meet yeah. anyway. You know, anyway, when you travel, we miss a flight, you know, baggage gets lost, things happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm very interested <laughs> to know what other challenges you face as a solo traveler. Perhaps it's not a challenge for us when we travel with other people, but mm -hmm. for a solo traveler, what are the challenges you face and what is it that comes to mind when you think of a travel blooper that happen to you and then you can advise people accordingly yeah. like don't do this if you solo travel mm -hmm. maybe not seeing some requirements in mm -hmm. some countries or the way they work on a daily life like for example to enter china you have some requirements right uh not in a visa point of view right now but uh for example the way you have to pay everything they use alipay instead of credit cards or debit cards uh so there's nothing that you can buy if you don't have alipay mm. so that was definitely like for one day and a half i remember that was blocked um then you have to download a vpn because otherwise you cannot use almost like 90 percent of your apps um and i remember like 
I got these messages from the banks and from Microsoft, like uh, there's a fraud alert uh, because like the, the government itself, like try to track everything. Mm. Uh, so the advice I would give is even if you're confident enough and you visited like many countries is definitely to get prepared and have having at least like 24, 48 hours to prepare all of the things that a new country requires. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a great tip. And it's not just for solo travelers. I think yes, it's for travelers in absolutely. general to, to find out the specific rules uh, of countries, you yes. know, when before you enter them. So you don't land up in a position where you probably can't enter mm -hmm. the country. You know, it's it's just for a generic rule for all travelers yes. that, you know, one should follow. But do you have any bloopers as well? Oh, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> many of them. I would say everywhere. It's mm. part of the journey. It's part of the challenge yeah. and definitely part of the adventure. Uh, like now we are laughing about it. Like, yeah. you know, like uh, losing a tire in Mongolia and ending up sleeping in the car with three, four degrees Celsius, like in the night. I was like, I was not ready for it, but mm. it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's. Like you said, we are laughing about it now, but it's also fun memories, right? Yes. When you look back. Yes. But um, now we've already been to some really enchanting places. You've taken us to some enchanting places, hidden gems, I can call them. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know if my next question is relevant, <laughs> but I will still <laughs> ask you, what is your hidden gem? I would say definitely the island of Fernando de Noronha. Mm -hmm. So it's in the north coast of Brazil, just in front of Recife. Uh, it looks like Rio de Janeiro probably 400 years ago. Oh, completely, wow. almost not completely, but almost inhabited. Um, and there are about... Almost like, uninhabited. Uninhabited, mm -hmm. yes. Um, there are about like few locals... And they only accept 180 people a month oh. in the island. As tourists. Uh, as a tourist, yes. A uh, few guest houses, few, I think two or three luxury hotels. Um, an amazing place to dive. Um, it's it's plain, so there's no tracks. but And it's a very tiny and, and small island. Mm -hmm. But I would say like really unknown island. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I have so many good memories about it. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely one of my hidden gems. Yeah. You don't have that mass tourism. Mm. And people are still being themselves. Uh, so you get to enjoy the real culture, the genuity and, you know, help of local people. Uh, no, I really like the fact that you said you get to enjoy real culture, yes. you know, because... Places are getting, you know, over tourism has killed so many places uh, in today's world. It's very sad, but it's true. And to be able to enjoy real culture in a place, I think that's beautiful. And that's why yes. it's your hidden gem. But if anybody was to go out um, solo traveling, which are the destinations that you would highly recommend that people should start with? Let's start with the continents. Mm -hmm. Africa, I would say probably Tanzania mm -hmm. or South Africa. Latin America, I would say Peru, mm -hmm. um, Mexico, and Costa Rica. And um, Tahiti as well. Like, For you can solo definitely, travel? yes, you can definitely start with Tahiti. Probably not the islands, but mm. definitely Tahiti. New Zealand, uh, for a solo travel, I would say it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and then in Asia, I would say China. Mm -hmm. Yes. For solo travelers. Yes. That's interesting. Absolutely. Yes. It's a very challenging place. Um, it doesn't really matter the place, mm. but more what you are looking for. Solo mm. traveling, yes. But which stage of or moment of your life you are right. in it? Okay. Do you want to meet a little bit of people? Solo travelers? Or you really want to stay alone? Mm. Um are you eager to eat anything? Because for me, being a vegan and vegetarian, that was one of the challenges as well. 
or you can adapt. Mm. Uh, are you ready to sleep in yurts and camps or do you really look for hotels and a little bit of comfort? Mm. So it really depends. Sure. Yes. So I think that's very important to identify what is it that you're looking for and then make your choices accordingly exactly. and choose a place accordingly and then you're good to go. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So, I mean, that's beautiful advice, but now for you, you've traveled already. We finished half of 2024. We still have yeah. a little bit left. <laughs> so which destination do you highly recommend that people should definitely visit in 2024? Definitely the Pacific Islands. Mm -hmm. Pacific I, Islands yes. are your love, I see. <laughs> so far, yes. I, I love all the places I've been to, but definitely I, I just think they are not explored enough mm -hmm. and they have a lot to offer like really a lot yes mm -hmm. but that's also one of the places that's not very explored exactly. you know not not a lot of people go there also it's it's a far off destination yeah. it's a long flight to get there mm -hmm. but i think that is why it has remained unexplored yes absolutely but and you're saying that it's it's definitely something that people should probably put on their bucket list Absolutely. for 2024 at least. Yes. Now, talking about bucket list, I'm very interested <laughs> to know what's on your bucket list. What's next in travel for you? Um, I have an idea about the Latin American country, uh, like, sorry, continent. Uh, then um, probably somewhere around the Pacific as well. Again. <laughs> Again. But it's in between the Pacific and the Atlantic. So okay. it's, it's very curious. Um, and probably somewhere around Central Africa. So it's, okay. it's in my bucket list. But okay. Yeah, so I'll these see. three areas of the world yes. um, are probably waiting for you. Yes. Well, with that, we come to the end of the podcast. Uh, thank you so much no, for joining us much. and <laughs> taking us on these various beautiful journeys to some really unexplored parts of the world. I'm sure a lot of listeners out there are encouraged to, you know, go out and uh, explore the world on their own, give a shout, uh, give yes. a shot at solo travel. Uh, I haven't solo traveled. I don't usually solo travel, but I'm really encouraged now, you know, to go out there and see some places yeah. on my own. I think it'll be a very different experience. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I think it will be absolutely fantastic so thank you so much thank you much. sonia for joining <laughs> us i wish you all the best and i wish thank you explore more of the world uh, another 95 in the yeah. next few years all alone and you keep enjoying and exploring the world and all the best to you in all your future thank adventures you. Thank you very much for Thank having you. me, Marsh. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your imagination and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until the next time, safe travels and keep exploring. 